Hi, I'm DS Yoxheimer, and this is, of course, another episode of The Spectre. Um, <laughs> been doing this over a decade. Not unlike the show Sister Wives. I guess it's been on for ten seasons, and um, this is the topic of this episode. Um, I've watched this shit show. Um, um, I watched it with my ex, so it's been kind of a part of my life, and I continued watching it because... I just can't get enough of the exploits of the Brown Clan, which is a Mormon clan. Um, uh, um, it's shown on TLC, and um, it's a polygamous family, Mormon polygamous family, um, not recognized by the conventional LDS church, um, run by the iron-fisted patriarch Cody Brown. Um, Mormon religion, just a little background, not a whole thing about it. Um, was founded by Joseph Smith in the 1820s, which he translated the book from um, these golden plates, which by witnesses was sort of these um, sort of golden metallic pages that had hieroglyphics on them that were held together by three, bound together by three big rings. Um, I guess, I don't know who the hell the witness was, but um, anyway. So, Joseph Smith was eventually killed when he was being held in prison in 18, uh, was it 1844? Yeah, 1844. They shot him in the fucking head. And, um, so by an angry mob. And, um, the, the only other, I guess, founding member or founding figure of the religion was the, you know, Brigham Young, as everyone, most people know. Um, he founded, uh, Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah, among other places in Utah. He was the governor of Utah, I guess, that region. Um, he had 55 wives and 56 children. And I think both him and Joseph Smith probably had some, of course, teenage girls, because that's the whole point of the religion, is to fuck as many women as you want and lure young, vulnerable girls into it, because it's a fucking cult. Anyway, um, so... Um, Cody Brown, um, he has a, uh, sort of a, uh, with his poultry four wives, has had about, I think, 18 kids, and some of them, he had a fourth wife, Robin, he brought in in the first season, and he, she had three kids or two, and, um, so, uh, when Robin came into the fold, he eventually adopted, I think, the two kids, the daughter and the son, so that I think brought it up to around 18 or 20 kids, I don't know exactly. Um, so, but the, the four wives' names are Mary, the first wife, Janelle, the second wife, Christine, the third wife, and Robin, the fourth wife. First four wives, he... He had, uh, well, too many fucking kids, obviously, as I mentioned before. Nearly 20 kids. So between, um, on TLC, between John and K plus 8, uh, 19 kids and counting, and the sister wives, the only thing on TLC you don't learn is how to use fucking birth control, apparently. Um, and in the 10 seasons, um, Cody and his brood of Mormon dolts <laughs> you want to call them that, um, brainwashed adults, fled from Utah because um, they lived in a, a single sort of dwelling with different, you know, kind of apartments. Um, it was like a sort of big white house. It, you know, it was kind of odd looking. Um, I think that was about the first season. Then they fled from there, maybe the first season and a half. The second season involved them moving because they were falling under, I guess they had bigamy charges against them and they were facing some possible serious charges. And it should also be noted that um, Christine was receiving food stamps before the show started at some point. So there's a little bit of welfare fraud in there. There's probably some other things going on that they didn't quite talk about on the show. And um, uh, by three of the wives, because he's not legally married to all of them. He was only legally married to Mary, because that was his first wife. The other ones were spiritual unions. That's what they call them in plural marriage, okay, it's, that's how it's euphemistically referred to, it's really, you know, polygamy, that's how, you know, um, but that sounds like you're doing something illegal and there's a stigma attached to that, so they don't call it that. Um, they all filed for bankruptcy 
under the other the three wives. This is before Robin came into the picture. So they ran up a bunch of like um, like a Home Depot card, I think a Target card and that kind of stuff and just like didn't, you know, oh, bankruptcy, you know, oh, she's not married to me, blah, blah, blah. And they just pulled some shit, you know. They got some tips from their lawyer, Saul Goodman out there out and <laughs> or something and um, did it. I mean, they knew what they were doing, clearly. Because you can't, I mean, nobody can afford to do this. It's just fucking nuts. So, um, so no doubt the IRS was sniffing around before this family got a reality series and they were um, basically um, TV stars and they were out to the public, kind of, I guess if you want to say normalizing this. Because um, most people didn't know how, I mean, we all knew there was some polygamy out there, but we knew like about Warren Jeffs. We didn't really know about, you know, uh, people that were doing sort of a Brady Bunch version of it. Um, so they moved to Vegas, and um, somehow, I mean, I know they got paid a pretty decent amount of money to do on the TLC show, but I, I don't really know how they, you know, are able to uh, do what they do. They always seem to be so financially strapped when they're, um, the last time they moved, because they just recently moved to Flagstaff, Arizona, where they were, Cody planned on building a huge, like, Mormon mansion they were all going to live in, and the sister wives wouldn't have it. They were like, no fucking way. So, it didn't work out. So they agreed on, at least currently, they agreed on separate homes on this property in Coyote Pass in Flagstaff, Arizona, but it's called Coyote Pass. So, but for a while, a little bit, they moved to Vegas and they built four big homes in a cul-de-sac. And unbeknownst, at least I didn't know they were, you know, it was more of a temporary situation. They were going to sell these homes and you know, because they didn't feel at home in Vegas, even though Mormons helped build Vegas, not unlike the Mafia. Um, so, anyway, it's just, it's known, you know, they have a lot of, I guess, stock in Hilton hotels and Dell computers, too, I guess. It's, um, Mormon Church is pretty wealthy, apparently. So, um, anyway, um, so, it, while they're in Vegas, they start their own line of plig jewelry, the sister wives do. Actually, Robin kind of spearheaded it, and they were having all these, like, family meeting, business meetings about it, and just, you know, kind of, um, the other ones didn't, you know, Janelle particularly, because she's the business-minded one, she didn't, she thought it was, a, you know, it wasn't, uh, going to take off, so, uh, and I checked the site recently for the My Sister Wives Closet, which is the line of jewelry they started, and, um, it says that they were kind of, like, uh, Either they were, yeah, they were revamping. The, I don't know if it has to do with the fact that they can't get their the cheap jewelry that's made probably in fucking China. But it, it said they were, um, there was nothing really available on the site, basically. It's like they were, they said they were basically getting new product or some shit like that. So currently the site is under works, as they say. So, um, in... So anyway, they, they live in Vegas for maybe, I don't know, was it two, three years? No idea. And uproot this bunch of kids. You know, they go to school, make friends and stuff like that. Fuck that. You know, Cody says they're moving, they're moving. He's such a controlling asshole. I fucking can't stand him. He doesn't take anybody into it. Everything's about this. Everything, all the whole family exists for him. That's what I get from him. You know, he, he is a, he lords over everybody. He is the king of that family. I think he's a colossal dick. And um, he just, you know, deserves whatever, you know, fate is has in store for him as far as I'm concerned. So, um, while in Vegas as well, you know, um, Miri, one of the pillars of this plural marriage, um, begins to crumble as Miri gets catfished by a woman posing as a guy. And there's recordings of her leaving voicemails to this person that she thinks is this dude, putting Cody down really harshly, you know what I mean? Just saying she loves this guy and Cody's such a piece of shit and, you know, you're better looking and all this. And so anyway, that falls apart. Um, but anyway, there is actually a picture of Miri with this woman at Disneyland or something. She went to meet her, but she was, I guess, someone that knew, said she knew the guy that she was going to hook up with at some point. So, um, here's that. Okay. 
So that reality sort of stupid show scandal broke, and um, they were kind of making a big deal about it. It was in the news, and they um, talked about it a lot in the show, except for really the voicemails. They really dodged around that. It was very deliberate and obvious. And um, so Miri was kind of had, you know, they didn't have a really close relationship. They probably still don't, you know, there's just kind of irreparable damage there, possibly. Um, but she went off in like, uh, and, and you can't, you can't, you can understand it. I mean, she was a neglected first wife, so why wouldn't she do that? It's, you know, this guy is, get, gets four women and, you know, um, and he marries a younger woman rather than a few years earlier. And I mean, who knows who's getting the most attention there? It's, it's, it's kooky. Um, so, and it's, he did this based on a kooky religion, you know, incepted in the 1820s for Christ's sakes, um, which if you look into Mormonism, it is beyond goofy. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's, it's every bit as crazy as Scientology. Um, I mean, even regular Christianity is fucking crazy, as far as I'm concerned. I know that might offend some people, but, you know, I'm just, I'm not a religious cat, so, I, uh, um, <laughs> so, anyway, but not getting into the, the whole, you know, um, Mormonism or anything in the script, but I don't, you know, if you're going around on bicycles wearing, like, white shirts and slacks and stuff, don't come to my fucking door, um, because I already got a Mormon Bible, um, somewhere. I was going to get it out for this, but I couldn't find it when I got to all my books. I was like, oh shit, I can't even, I couldn't even find it. Um, I just found that Gideon Bible I stole from the hotel once, but, so anyway, <laughs> getting back to the thick of the plot. So, so Miri, you know, I mean, they kind of, they, they stay together. I think she's kind of, you know, she's wrapped up in this whole thing, probably tied in financially, you know, she can't, um, do much of anything else. She's living in a house that was bought pretty much with the pooled resources of the family financially. And she was living in a big house with really nobody. You know, daughter was, I think, going off to school or something. Mariah, she was... And even if she was there, they lived in a big house. The other wives had several children, at least. So, um, anyway. Um, so... In the midst of all this, of course, the big revelation was that um, her daughter, her oldest daughter, Mariah, who um, I guess actually planned on growing up and um, entering into plural marriage, um, turns out she's gay. Um, so uh, it's... it um, in. This is, I mean, not a big deal. I mean, nobody, usually most people just these days, it's not a, but some people do think it's a big deal if it goes maybe perhaps against their religious beliefs. Um, the other sister wives were very accepting and hugged her. And Mary, I think she was in shock, you know, I mean, she's in a different place, obviously. I don't think she, but I, she, I think she may have, maybe she did have a problem with it. I don't know. I mean, they, they grew up with this religion and Mormonism does have a problem with like Christianity does with homosexuality. So, uh, you know, uh, it's just not what she had in mind for her, but, you know, she embraced it basically at some point. She didn't seem to be, um, she, you know, met her girlfriend and stuff eventually, and uh, I guess now they're planning on having kids and stuff at some point. And these, these kids went up and got married, like, young. I mean, um, the Duggars and stuff, you know, 19 kids and counting, they would just marry them off. I don't know how, the, you know, Cody affords all these weddings. I guess, like, the Mormon Mafia kind of helps them out with that. I don't know. There probably is a Mormon Mafia if there's an Amish Mafia. I mean, shit. Who knows? So, uh, but yeah, um, Sister Wives is a fucked up show. I mean, I, I can't believe some of the crazy stuff on TV, but this is, you know, definitely one of them. Um, and I'm ashamed to say that I've watched every episode since the beginning, and it's, it's just, 
I mean, in this season, they're playing like the serious music at the beginning. You know, it's not that like really lighthearted music. It's just really, um, <laughs> you know, like it was kind of. It was actually kind of mirrored the series um, Big Love, like the final season or the final two seasons, the opening intro, like it was a little um, uh, kind of darker, you know, it wasn't as quite as um, lighthearted or whatnot um, in the opening. It's the show with uh, Bill Paxton and um, who was else? Chloe Seven G was in it and uh, Jennifer Goodwin and Gene and Triplehorn. See? Well, I rattled those names off, so... Anyway, <laughs> the cast, but it's it, that show came out before Sister Wives, and it does um, parallel that show quite a bit, um, which I'm sure after that era... It was on HBO. It's actually a pretty good show if you can... You have HBO Go or something like that, or it might be on Amazon. Um, I could watch it again if I had the internet, but we're, the internet is down where I'm at now, strangely enough, so... Um, among other things... You know, things are crazy now and everything like that. Um, so, <laughs> clearly. And um, so, um, anyway, um, if... I think, I think the next episode I might do about Freemasonry, I'm not really sure. Um, but if you have any suggestions, you can leave in the comments section. Um, I appreciate, you know, uh, nice comments. Um, threats are nice, you know, keeps me on my toes. Look, look over my shoulder when I'm walking down the street, you know. With this coronavirus, I have enough shit to worry about. We all do. Um, just, you know, uh, stay home. I'm not going to say the same thing everybody else says, of course, but, uh, um, if you watch, thanks for watching. This is DS Yoxheimer, and this has been another edition of The Spectre.